Good morning, everyone. Thank you for standing. I'm a little embarrassed by that, but um, I'll make do. And you can see Charles's name on here. We all have the benefit of uh, Charles and I have worked together for a few years, so his fingerprints are all over this presentation, which I guarantee will make it a lot more interesting. So he said something at the very beginning, which is somewhat of a revelation that I, not a lot of you are going to be surprised by this, but I've heard a lot of knowledge is power uh, the last couple days, and, and it's not true, I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, access to knowledge is power. And here's really the study that kind of broke it open for me, and, and uh, I think hopefully we'll do the same for you, is Robert Kelly at the Carnegie Mellon University over the last 20 years asked uh, thousands of knowledge workers what percentage of the knowledge you need to do your job is stored in your own mind. And uh, 1986, it's pretty understandable that it was 75%. So we were all vessels of information, as Charles talked about, walking around doing our jobs. Uh, 10 years later, that dropped to 20%. Guess where it is today? Um, under 10%. So um, that's pretty astounding. It blew my mind. And basically, it means that 90% uh, of what you need to know to do your job, you don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> good luck with that, yeah. So what does that mean? That means that, um, you know, th there were some kind of revelations. We realized that vast amounts of knowledge should be in libraries, not in heads, and I love this graphic, um, because really our ability to access information and our ability to uh, make use of that information in an experiential way um, is the new power. and. Sorry, we're not getting it from the classroom. Uh, you know, this is, uh, learning is not what happens in classrooms. Learning is what happens through our experiences. And that's, hence, the term experiential learning. And um, yesterday, the, the keynote, the plenaries, were really about academic. And I think, you know, this one is more about workplace learning. But you can't divorce the two. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a crossover today with a case study about how experiential learning might be that bridge. Learning can occur anytime, anywhere, and often when you least expect it. And most good learning is action-oriented, much more you know, learning by doing. So um, here's the good news. The good news is we can have our cake and eat it too. And uh, this how many of you have heard of the richness reach trade-off? It kind of makes sense. Um, well, let me describe it for you. Um, the concept here is in the kind of the Oxbridge model, of uh, richness and reach, you can either have one or the other. Uh, richness is this concept of you have a professor and you're in a particular area, maybe you have a mentoring relationship and you have a rich experience, but that doesn't scale. Um, well, with technology now and experiential learning and other techniques that are, you know, Moodle, et cetera, uh, cloud computing, we do have the ability to experience richness at scale. Um, and we're going to talk about how we do that. I think one of the best ways to do it is to embrace Socrates. And there's been this whole Plato versus Socrates kind of debate going on. Um, and uh, I'm here to tell you it's not one or the other. Um, I think Plato, the academy model, the teaching one to many, which is what I'm doing right here, breaking all the rules, uh, certainly has a place. I think a lot of people have been saying courses are dead. And um, I think in a certain way, maybe in the workplace, Courses are dying, and they're not quite dead. In, in you know, the academic circles, you cannot say courses are dead. So we have to find a way to embrace the one-on-one -on -one dialogue experiential component, but do it within the context of maybe the Plato Academy. Um, here's an interesting study by um, Stolovich and Keeps around the Plato mentality. You know, what desired performance improvement occurs over time. This is a um, an event right here in the, you know, the kind of the E uh, class, whether it's ILT or e-learning, whatever it is. So before class, you know a little bit. That's kind of the bottom left. And then over time, you're supposed to learn a lot during class. And then after class, you have a, a desired performance improvement, right? Well, in reality, this is what happens. Um, the golf pro dip. How many of you have heard this one? This is a good one. Uh, where, um, for those of you who play golf, um, as soon as you meet with a golf pro and you start practicing, you get much worse immediately. And it's pretty, 
disillusioning. But um, over time, of course, you get a little bit better, you get a little bit better. And then after the event, what happens? You forget everything, uh, the forgetting curve, and then your actual performance improvement is what? Exactly the same as when you started. <laughs> so how are we going to fix that? Uh, practice. Um, and I think, you know, it's a very simple thing, but unfortunately not built into a lot of today's models is the concept of, um, hey, after class, maybe I should go back and do more reading, or maybe I should engage with a forum, or maybe I should try and practice the things I learned, or, God forbid, take what I learned into the workplace, or even better, learn in the workplace. So these are kind of some ideas around um, how you might improve this. So, we're trying, if we can, to return to a Periclean golden age uh, where, you know, the baby boomers, the Plato Academy kind of model, the Socratic digital natives. Now, this is not, this has nothing to do with generational age or anything. I know a lot of young Plato people. I know a lot of, you know, not less young uh, digital natives. Um, but they do think differently. And I, I'm kind of getting tired of the whole generational gap thing, but it, it does, it, it rings true, especially when it comes to the creation of, of learning objects and the way that you engage with people. Perfect example, um, digital natives don't buy CDs. They download music, create their own CDs, and share them with their friends. So they're co-creators. How can you take advantage of that? I think you know one thing that um, Martin talked about was the co-creation aspect of Moodle and other collaborative technologies Charles is encouraging all of you, and I loved watching OEB 2009, you know, on Twitter yesterday, is that kind of co-creation element. So you're all digital natives, congratulations. Um, teacher focused versus self-directed, a lot of self-directed learning. Um, oblivious to authority, this is a great one. Now, th this doesn't necessarily mean that um, everybody acts like uh, the keynote addresses son from yesterday. Um, in school, but it means that in the past, authority was granted to those, I mean, I'm on a podium, therefore, obviously, I have your authority. Um, that's not the case anymore. I think you, you're gonna grant me authority based on what you think of me, what I have to say, what elements around uh, what I'm saying resonate with you. So you're oblivious to the traditional methods of authority, but that doesn't mean you disrespect kind of off the cuff. Um, and chunked content, this concept of, you know, I'll learn the average human uh, adult learner. Does everybody know how long uh, in learning, they say 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I mean, I've talked to some neuroscientists who say it's about an hour, okay? You can, you can absorb an hour's worth of content, which according to my watch, you're now completely overloaded cognitively, <laughs> and none of this is sinking in. So um, that's why I'm using more pictures. Um, Here's a good one, Metcalf's Law. Uh, the value of a network equals the square of the number of users. So what we're trying to do is we're saying, okay, how can we embrace the digital native? How can we overcome the, um, the golf pro dip, et cetera? And, uh, and we have a thing called the Borg effect, um, which is, you know, for you Star Trek fans, yes, it is the same Borg. Um, the universe of content in the classroom equals the square of the number of student experiences. 